I'm standing high above Notre Dame's campus on one of its tallest and most recognizable buildings, the Hesburgh Library. From this iconic campus landmark, together we will embark on our trek across campus to learn quantitative skills, solve mathematical problems, and discover what is necessary for exponential success here at Notre Dame. Joining us along the way will be two Ascend students, or Ascendites as we've come to know them. Just like you, they're both incoming freshmen and going through the Ascend program, and you'll be assisting them along this journey. Hello, I'm Hakeem Sampho, and I'm from Alexandria, Virginia. I'm a current chemical engineering major, and although I have just arrived on campus, my favorite place is Hesburgh Library. I've never really been part of a team, but I'm excited to be here. Hi, I'm Natalia Carrasco. I am from State College, Pennsylvania, and I'm currently a chemical engineering major, and I'm so excited to be here at the University of Notre Dame. Fun fact about me, I play four instruments, and I have really flexible thumbs. What campus treasures will you discover? Who will you meet? Will you come up with the right combination of teamwork, outlook, and know-how to cross the finish line? These are the questions that will be weighed most heavily as we get ready to begin the Ascend Challenge. In a few moments, you'll be leaving on your quest across campus. There are four legs in this challenge, one each week. At the start of each leg, you'll be given a clue that'll guide you to the location of the weekly challenge where you'll be asked to complete math-based tasks and problems in order to proceed. You'll also be given an Ascend packet, a collection of resources to help you along the way. Your first clue and Ascend packet are waiting for you there at the podium. When I give the word, our Ascendites will run over, read the clue, and open the packet. Be sure to pay attention because they'll need your help along the way. You are all on the same team. Are you ready? Notre Dame is waiting for you. Good luck and see you at the first challenge. Go! After the horseman and after the gift came the house that Rocky built. Between study spaces, one old, one new, from 3.3 million volumes to within the Crossroads view. Man, that's really a tough one. Yeah, we just got here and I really don't know what any of that means. A study spaces, is there anything in our send facts that talks about that? Welcome to Ascend's Guide to Campus, a showcase of campus life and a guide to the extraordinary. Notre Dame is host to many great study areas, ranging from the quiet and serene to those that are lively and bustling. It's hard to be both iconic and popular, but believe it or not, the Hesburgh Library is both. It also plays host to more than 3.3 million volumes and subscriptions. Spaces such as Bond Hall, La Fortune Hall, Coleman Morse, and DeBartolo Hall also offer unique study experiences. The Duncan Student Center has become a popular study space due to its close proximity to classrooms and dining amenities. These spaces are some of the most recent additions to campus and were part of the Campus Crossroads project completed in 2018. I mean, 3.3 million volumes, that has, that has to be the library, right? Yeah, books in the library volumes. Well, what about the crossroads? The crossroads? Yeah. Huh. According to the Ascend Packet, it has to be somewhere between the library and Duncan Student Center. So it has to be here. Yeah, I think it said it's in between the Four Horsemen, the Gip, and the House that Rockney built. 
Yeah, I've seen Rudy before. This is a statue. Okay, so it has to be here. Come on, let's go. Whoa. Wow. This is so cool. Look, there they are. Oh my god, yeah, let's go. Welcome and congratulations to making it to this week's challenge. You may be wondering why we're standing here at the 50 yard line and what this has to do with math. So to explain, allow me to introduce Professor Sonia Mapes. At each challenge, you'll meet a new faculty member from the math department that you'll likely have in class, just like Professor Mapes. Thanks, Brian. Let me begin by welcoming you all to the Ascend team. This week, we're gonna begin by looking at our fundamental functions. We're gonna start by looking at linear and quadratic functions in a challenge called, Can He Catch It? We'll be using our math skills to recreate one of Notre Dame's most iconic game-winning touchdowns. To do so, we're gonna need to compute the velocity and angle of the throw. But before we go any further, let's take a look at the play in question. It's almost 20 seconds gone. Toward the end zone! Touchdown! Will Fuller! 39! Yards! What a throw by Kaiser. He bought time and then threw a strike. What a throw and catch. Now to help us see what went into that amazing play, up close we've asked quarterback Tyler Buchner and wide receiver Lorenzo Stiles to break it down for us. Afterwards, it's going to be your turn to put your skills to the test. However, I mean your math skills. Take it away, Tyler. Show us what we're doing. Thanks, Professor Mapes. So this play comes from the 2015 Virginia game, where the Irish were down 26-27 with only 20 seconds left in the game. Deshaun Kaiser hits Will Fuller on an absolute bomb, perfectly in stride to win the game. It's a 39-yard touchdown. But the ball is actually being thrown from the far hash of the 49-yard line to the opposite sideline, which makes this about a 60-yard throw in the air. It looked a little like this. Hey, there we go. What a great throw. Thank you, Tyler and Lorenzo. Go Irish. Now, it's our turn to break it down. In order to hit the receiver perfectly in stride, the quarterback needs to know how fast the receiver is running, as well as what angle and trajectory to throw the ball. Our challenge is to demonstrate this thought process by modeling the path of the ball. Before we begin, let's take a time out to think about how we can do this. Great answer, we'll use a quadratic function because as the ball moves forward, it's first going to rise in the air and then the ball will fall back down due to gravity. It follows what's called a parabolic path. All right, Ascend team, now it's your turn. It's time to begin the challenge. On my mark, you're gonna need to think about how to model the path of the ball. In a function, we always have to keep in mind what the input is and what the output is. In this case, the input is gonna be the yardage and the output is gonna be the height. Before you are cards that are the factors of the right function. Your goal is to find the pieces you need to create the function that could model the throw. If you have found the right function, we'll have the right information to calculate the angle and the speed to set the football throwing machine. We'll launch the ball from the 49 yard line. If your answer is correct, the pass should go through the hoop on the three yard line and be catchable. If not, you're gonna have to try again until you have the correct answer. Are you ready? Okay, on your mark, get set, go. Huh. Hakeem, huh. if we start with the 50 yard line as our zero, then this is just like a number line, right? You're right, yeah. Okay, so then if we're starting one from it, uh -huh. then wouldn't that be this one? Right, that makes a lot of sense, right? So that means that 
47 from the 50 yard line would be the three yard line, right? I right? think these are the two. They make a quadratic equation. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Okay, then. let's go. Okay, I think this is the function. All right. What are we missing? I don't know. Let's go look. Hmm. Oh no, it looks like they're missing something. Can you help them out? Huh. What do you think we're missing? I don't know. We have our two points. Right. You make a quadratic equation. Yeah. Hakeem, we're missing the height. Uh -huh. We need the height. Uh-huh. You're like two about, yards about, tall, about, right? About. Yeah, so if you go stand in the middle while they throw the ball, uh -huh. then we can calculate the maximum height. That's a good idea. Yeah, let's go do that. Sounds good. Hey, Tyler, can you throw the ball again? Okay. So it was like 10 Hakeem's tall, which means we have 20 yards. So I was just at the 24 yard line, right? And yeah. if you put in 24 for each X and multiply by negative 0.035, yeah. we're gonna get 20. And You're that's right. We're missing. Okay, okay. So let's, let's run this over. It. Okay, this model's the function. Okay, got it. ball was going to start on our 49 yard line and end at their three yard line, which you could represent as negative one on the x axis and 47. But this is only two points. You need a total of three points to model a quadratic. So by finding the ball's maximum height, you could find our third point and find the quadratic function. However, it's important to note we modeled this with yardage as our input. If we wanted time to be our input, then this function would completely change. It's a good thing to think about. Also, from each function, we were able to determine an initial velocity. We'll discuss later on how we could use mathematics to calculate this. Thank you, Professor Mapes, and great work, team. As you can see, math has many applications, and none are more exciting than using it to complete a winning touchdown. But believe it or not, we're able to solve even more complex problems using these principles. Imagine, rather than predicting a throw on a flat football field, we had to complete the throw to someone on an inclined plane. Like these stairs. This week, we'll dive into topics like this, as well as understanding rate of change. Linear functions have a constant rate of change, whereas quadratics have an ever-changing rate of change. Most importantly, to do this, you must first be able to model linear equations and quadratics. Are you ready to ascend to this week's challenge? Let's get going.